Hello my dear friends. My name is Dr. Nitin and welcome to Perio Basics. In this video I am going to talk about the classification systems used in periodontology including the recent 2017 classification system to classify the periodontal and perimplant diseases and conditions. So first question is why do we need a classification system? We need a classification system so that we can systematically classify the diseases into different categories. Traditionally, we have been using categories like inflammatory diseases or the congenital diseases or the neoplastic diseases like that. For example, if I say itis, conjunctivitis, gastroenteritis or periodontitis, it means that these are inflammatory diseases because itis means inflammation. Similarly, if I say sarcoma or carcinoma, it means that I am talking about uh, neoplastic diseases. So why can't we simply classify the periodontal diseases into these categories? The answer is that we are dealing with multifactorial diseases. Periodontitis is a multifactorial disease and it is not so easy to classify uh, periodontitis into these categories. Now before I talk about the classification systems that have been used so far in the field, I would like to say something. Whenever a new classification system is introduced, there is a resistance to that classification system. And I believe that the reason uh, for that is that if I am using a particular classification for last 10 years or 15 years and suddenly I am told to change my classification system and use the new one, then there is an inherent resistance which I will give to that class new classification system. But I think that when your scientific knowledge improves, more and more scientific literature comes into the picture. Your understanding regarding the idiopathogenesis, treatment planning, everything changes with time. And when so many people they are coming together and they are giving new classification system or they are modifying the existing classification system, we should first sit back and think about it. We should check out what kind of scientific evidence has been given on the basis of which the new classification system has been developed. The recent 2017 classification system is a, a very logically designed classification system based on sound scientific background. So I think that during my this lecture, we will try to understand various aspects of these classification systems and on what basis the recent classification system has been developed. Now this is a very vast topic. So I'll be making more than one video on these uh, this topic classification system so please subscribe this channel so that you view all the videos that i upload uh, on this classification system now let's start with this lecture dr gary armitage in his classical article classifying periodontal disease is a long-standing dilemma has very systematically classified various classification systems based on timeline depending upon the predominant paradigms at that duration of time. He has classified various classification systems into three categories. First is the clinical characteristics paradigm. The second one is the classical pathology paradigm. And the third one is the infectious etiology paradigm. Now the first paradigm that is the clinical characteristics paradigm. The classification systems given during this period, they were totally dependent on the clinical features of the disease. Why? Because there was a little known about the histopathology of the disease or what happens to the tissue and what is the exact etiology of the disease. So these classification systems were totally dependent upon how the, what was the clinical picture of the disease. Now various authors during this period gave the classification systems and said that the periodontitis or periodontal diseases, they are local diseases. Many others, they said that these are not local diseases, these are the manifestations of the systemic diseases. Some others, they said that it is a combination of local and the systemic factors. So a very good example of these classification systems was the classification system given by Dr. C.D. Davis. In this classification system, he has given three categories, three classes of the diseases. One, 
is gingival resection with minimal or no inflammation. In this category, he included those cases which were caused due to toothbrush trauma and there was a minimal inflammatory component. The second category was periodontal destruction secondary to lime deposits, that is the calculus deposits. In today's terminology, we call this condition as chronic periodontitis or grade A or grade B periodontitis. Then third category was Riggs disease. Now here I would like to emphasize the name of Dr. John Rigg who extensively lectured on periodontitis during late 1860s and 1870s. However, his opinions were published by others. Now Riggs disease according to uh, Dr. Davis was caused due to the necrosis of the alveolar process. So the disease clinically resulted in aggressive loss of the periodontal tissues in spite of minimal availability or minimal presence of the local factors. Another classification system was given by Dr. G. V. Black in 1886 where he classified the periodontal diseases into five categories. The first category included constitutional gingivitis. In this category, he included uh, gingivitis caused due to scurvy and similar causes. The second category included a painful form of gingivitis, which is equivalent to acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis in today's terminologies. The third category included the simple gingivitis, which is common form of gingivitis caused due to presence of dental plaque. The fourth category included calicic inflammation of the periodontal membrane which is equivalent to chronic periodontitis or grade A, grade B periodontitis in today's terminology where the periodontal destruction commensurates with the presence of local factors. And the fifth category included phagedonic pericementitis which included those cases where there was aggressive periodontal destruction. The term is equivalent to grade C periodontitis or aggressive periodontitis in today's terminology. Now coming on to the classical pathology paradigm. The classification systems given during this duration of time were based on the principles of general pathology. If you go through these classification systems, you will see that terms like atrophy, dystrophy or degeneration have been extensively used. The two main researchers who dominated this duration of time were Dr. Orban and Dr. Gottlieb. Now this is Dr. Orban's classification system you can see that he has classified the periodontal diseases into five categories. First is the inflammatory diseases, then we have the degenerative diseases, then we have atrophic diseases, then we have hypertrophic diseases, and then we have the traumatic diseases. Dear friends, periodontal diseases have a very long history, probably as old as the history of mankind. Now people at different point in time, different places, in different civilizations have tried to understand and classify these diseases according to their understanding. Now why we are trying to understand these old classification systems? Now this is because to understand the present status of our understanding in particular field of periodontics or any other field, we first have to know the history so that we know our journey to our present status. We are discussing these classification systems so that you can understand the upcoming classification systems which I am going to discuss in the next video in perspective. So friends, in the next video lecture I will be discussing the recent classification systems. All this I discuss in my videos is available in my website and as well as in my book Perio Basics. You can buy this book on my website periobasics.com and socialpublications.co.in. A direct link to purchase this book on PayPal has been given in the description below. So friends, if you have any doubts, any further clarifications you want on this topic, you can just drop me a mail on my email ID and I'll see you next time with more classification systems. See you next time. Thank you.